Well, this is an awesome day. I get to do a fresh install of VMware vSphere ESXi 7.0 Update 1. I'm hoping to make this video as short, concise, and uh, straightforward as possible. That's the goal. Let's get into it. So vSphere, how to get it? You gotta get this code, right? So here's the 7.0 update one code. That's the file name, and there's a number of ways to get it, okay? VMware account, vExpert, vMugAvanch, and free hypervisor download. Also a tool to make the uh, ESXi image bootable on a USB drive. Well, 32 gig minimum, that's what you need for 7.0 or later these days. That's in a readme. And Rufus, Rufus is the tool that I've written about a long time ago. Over here on the left, we've already got Rufus downloaded. And what you want to do is you want to look for Rufus Portable. 312, right there is the version right now. 312P Portable. The very first time it asks you a couple extra questions, and then we get this screenshot to go off of. So let's uh, say yes to user access control. Bring up the UI on the correct screen. Sorry about that. And let's go ahead and select the ISO. Okay, that is the correct ISO. Is there anything else we need to change? Well, if you look around here, no. We have BIOS or UEFI handled, so I don't know what your system is. I would prefer you go UEFI. You probably should if it's less than five years old for sure. Um, FAT32, MBR, master boot record. We're not gonna change anything, right? We just point to the ISO and leave Rufus at all its defaults. Hit start. It's gonna warn me and yep, I gotta say yes to pull down the latest version of this file. That's a one-shot deal. And this article actually covers that, right? It's right here. Warning, I'm gonna destroy all the data on here. Yes, we know that. Deleting partitions, well, that was fast. I had already taken care of that. So in theory, it should absolutely nuke all partitions. I would encourage you to be something that's supported like the machine we're talking about here is one of these that's absolutely on the VMware compatibility list. Okay, so the, and actually um, right there on my homepage, I have an article, a little bit about compatibility. Kind of a big deal to uh, check that. And there you go, 7.0 update one is compatible with this system. And it finished in 39 seconds. So what's next? Well, we can close Rufus and use the eject tray that's in the bottom of the um, primary monitor. And the drive is now ejected. We are back. The drive is now in this server. I put it in the front USB port. Um, so Xeon D eight core system here, Xeon D 1541 it's called. And now we got to power it up. Now I have something called IPMI in this machine. That'll be really handy here. I'll use the HTML5 interface. I don't need Java. And we're gonna boot the machine and you're gonna be able to see me do the install. I realize not everyone has that, if you, especially if you're installing this not on a proper server. Um, but for me, it's great to have the machine far away. I don't need a keyboard, monitor, mouse attached to it. So naturally I'm gonna to wanna to turn it on and we get a good minute for power on self-test to finish. Now let's establish a remote control session. So if we go to HTML5 here, we'll be able to see the system come up and we can even give ourselves a virtual keyboard so you can better see what I'm doing. And if we need to change the boot order, great. In my case, I don't. I already have my bias set the way it comes from wired zone and bundle form, UEFI turned on, and uh, USB set high in the boot order, um, highest in the boot order. So I should have no trouble. I don't have to hit any alternate boot sequence. It should just start booting off of this Rufus bootable media we just created. That we're gonna install ESXi right back onto. Now again, the method by which you get your ESXi code does not matter. There's lots of ways to install ESXi. This is just one kind of creative way uh, that's particularly elegant and particularly um, robust to work on a wide variety of systems. Um, if you want, if you have a way to mount ISO, say we have a ZND 2100 or X11 series system, 
then yeah, you can actually go and just mount virtual media right up here in the HTML5 interface. But a ZND1500, ZND the X10 series of platform, uh, Supermicro is informing, no, they're not going to actually add HTML, uh, the ability to mount ISOs from here. You can do it with the Java app, but then you need Java, and that's got problems. And you could also do it with network shares, but that's been broken by Windows security issues. So mounting a network share is no longer as viable as it once was for mounting remote media over this HTML5 interface. So we're going to keep it right here, <laughs> just um, physically, booting Rufus locally. The speed of this will actually be the fastest install. So it's not only is it elegant and very universal for a lot of different systems, but it's also rather quick. Any kind of booting over the network can be very, very slow, 10, 15 minutes, just to get this thing booted and started. All right, here we go. Enter to continue. F11 and continue. All right, let's do the virtual keyboard. So I'm going to hit F11. Now is where it's scanning all USB drives, or all drives, excuse me, period, SATA, and so forth. All right, and it found a bunch of drives. I'm going to down arrow my way right to the UltraFit. Now that it's highlighted in yellow, I can move the mouse out of the way and simply hit Enter to select the SanDisk. And it warns me it's going to overwrite all data on there. That's OK. US keyboard sounds good. Password twice. Enter key. Wait a little bit. And we get one more confirmation. This screen's kind of weird. It's HP 32. Um, but yeah, it's not like you can tell the word Sandus there, right? It's a little funky. All right, F11 is the way to go forward. And now we just wait. Probably going to time lapse speed this section up, but you can take a look at my clock. It's not going to take very long. Told you it was fast, <laughs> about a minute later. So now we just uh, have this strange prompt to remove installation media for rebooting. Well, in this case, we didn't mount an ISO virtually or anything, we put it locally. So there's nothing to remove. We want to leave the USB drive in. So just hit enter. And our confidence is very high that we're totally good to go at this point because, well, we just booted from this known good USB drive. There's no trouble with the boot order. Now it's got ESXi installed on it rather than just bootable installer. And uh, there we go. System halted. We're going to see the bias splash screen come up. And then we're just going to watch it boot. And there you have it. Less than one minute later, it is done. Thank you again for watching. And thank you for visiting TinkerTry. IT at home. Consider liking the video, by the way. If you're not going to subscribe, at least like it. It really helps surface the video so that other people get to enjoy it and benefit from it. Bye for now. Thanks.